So this three week trip up north, our priority for packing. So the essentials that we're gonna be packing first. We're off grid, so water is the number one thing we need to be able to carry. To not have to cross the tide to come back into town to fill up containers. Now as far as water, we've got three 20 litre jerry cans. I've got three 20 litre buckets. So we're at 120 litres there. This grey container here holds 60 litres. Now that's drinking water. What's on the 79, another 40 litres. And then this 2015 Jayco Expander Outback. Around the 85 litre mark in the Jayco. So we're calling it 300 litres for us going onto the beach. So we worked that out over a 10 day period and that's around the 30 litres a day. That's including showering as well. We've got the big solar panel packed in and we've got a battery. So the Jayco has its own solar, its own battery. It's pretty well supported, the Jayco. Now gas runs the Jayco's fridge. So it's important that those two nine kilos are gonna be full before we leave. We do come out into town, we'll collect water when we collect food. Even our little squirter bottle that we use once we get across that salt water, that first time we just wash everything down. So the big fridge in the Jayco, it runs on gas. The big 80 litre angle we've got, it runs on power. Now I share the load to power that fridge. The caravan at night, I've got this extra battery which we run from time to time during the day. And then obviously the 79's battery, we've got an Anderson plug coming out the back which feeds off that main battery as well. The recovery bag, we've got a snatch strap, we've got a winch block, we've got a tree trunk protector and we've got an extension strap. Running a winch on the 79, we've got the rubber ducky and we've also got the mow. So if we do need to come across at a highish type tide and we're not ready to cross, we do have a way of getting across if need be. So yeah, it's an off-grid trip. Now while we're only 30 or 40 k's out of town, with that tidal crossing, we may as well be in the desert. So this is the emergency helipad. So it also reminds you how remote you are when that tide's in. And that keeping the kids resilient to understanding the tracks and snakes, etc. So hooked up here, this is the first time towing the van on the 35. So we have increased our height on the vehicle and we're still a touch nose up on that A-frame. The leaf springs here are handling this weight with these. We've still got to fill up 200 odd kilos of water in the tray. I'm expecting the springs to settle just that little bit. These single axle trailers, they actually tow a lot nicer, nose down that little bit. We've hit the dirt and now it's time to air down. So what I've done with this setup now, we know it's been dry and we know there's gonna be some soft sand. I've gone down to 17 in the front and I've gone down to 19 in the rear. Got the caravan on 19 as well. Now on the offset rim and with all this weight in the tray, the tyre seems to be bagging, just sitting still. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put some air in the airbags just to help the suspension. In case we do need to put the foot down in a few spots, I'm not gonna get these uncontrollable bounces because we don't have a lot of air in the tyres. The airbags will help with the suspension and hopefully hold it a little bit firm for us. But at the same time, I've got the tyres down to be able to give us traction in the dry sand. Not ideal, we've got the chainsaw in the toolbox. It's gonna to be a matter of untying the kids' kayaks if we desperately need that for a recovery. All right, the first time that this truck's going across the pebbly crossing. We're marking the timer so we can see if the tide, it looks like it's still running out. So we might be a touch early. Walking the track. Beautiful morning. How good is it? It's crystal clear, it's warm. Mum's in sand, Dad's on rock. Actually, yeah, you're, I think you're shallow. Yeah, but it's rocky. Now the line changes ever so slightly from year to year. So it's nice to see another vehicle crossing. 
just before we do our first cross of our holiday stay. So after towing on the 35s for the eight or so hours to get up here onto the beach, we were in fourth gear a lot more often on some of the inclines than we were last year in the grey truck with the older gearing. But once I found that sweet spot, going back to fourth at around 95 k's, there was no waiting for the motor to pick up because we were, we were inside that good rev range where it wasn't unhappy climbing again. But in saying that, sit down for this. The fuel numbers were not great. After that eight hour stint, and we were pushing. You gotta remember we're on the 35s. I've added the 10% to my kilometers. It's still around the 20 liters per 100. And that's about the same as the gray truck on the 35s, but towing bullet truck with all its spares. So we had nearly three ton in tow and then three or 400 kilos in the tray. So in my opinion, other than a re-gear, the only way to get better consumption towing is to actually physically do a tune to the motor and put a new clutch in it. So you want to gain the power before you do start to tow. Or go back to a 285, 7516 or a 33 and do your towing on a smaller tyre. The stock motor on the 35s is not a good recipe for good numbers towing. 70 series. Every Toyota's cup of tea, this one. But when I see it in a creek, and if you look at the specs from Toyota, the creek crossings up to 600 mil. We all know where the starter motors are on these motors, right between the V. It's a 10 hour labor process to get to them. Big dollars when you get your creek crossings wrong. And then the next day, the starter won't fire up. Two keys, three keys, it's still not turning over. But when we're talking salt water, that's a whole different concept. You're never gonna get that thing dry. And not to mention Shell, seeing this Fortuna, that will never be the same truck again. Hey Dad, where are you? Hey Dad, Yeah. what are you doing? Getting all that salt water off the brakes. Not what is... we, we didn't cross too high, but fresh water straight on top of the salt gives it no chance or gives it our best chance of it not rusting while we're on the beach. So we know we were sort of three inches into the rim and we went slow. Most importantly, the caravan, which is gonna be on here for three weeks. It's another reason why I don't use my handbrake off-road too. So we'll conclude this video here. We're set up, the sun is shining. We have 17 nights up here with a plan run into town for food and water around the halfway mark. While the Jayco's set up, we're gonna do a walk around for those of you that have asked. A great off-road camper, and we're gonna show you the pros and cons, plus show you the beachside mods that we do to it on the trip here. That'll be in the next episode. Bullet's last run out of the garage. The new diff's going in next week. Have a look at some of these images. He's done such a great job. The stud upgrade on the housing, to marry in with the centre. We won't know ourselves. There'll be no spacing outside of the hub this time. Whereas this time we've got about 100 mil. We've got Tony Shire's IFS hub spacers. Then we've got about 60 mil of spacer to marry up to the 80 rear. We can throw all that away. Our turning circle is gonna be so much better. I was thinking about getting a head start and ripping the old housing out. But with this rain and wind, it's just not gonna happen. Oh, have a look at that rain. The wind was having a go too, trying to push it back where it came from. It's just gonna have to now wait till next week. And as always, thanks for watching.